Hey, and welcome to another video in the series of how to start with monogame. And today we're going to talk about sprites. Sprite is something you will see in many games, kind of like 99 to 100 percent of them. It's basically when a texture has movement or any other kind of interaction or uh, animation on the screen. So what do we have right now? We have this since last episode, a texture that just sits there and isn't all that much fun. It's, you know, so let's create a new class called Sprite. But wait, before I do that, let me just show you one thing. I have created this uh, GitHub page for this project. So if you go to github.com slash slamswamp, you will be able to see my repository called YouTube Game Project. And whenever I have something uh, created in this series, I will upload it to this uh, GitHub page and you will be able to download the source code and uh, or just look through the files here on GitHub's uh, page. And right now it's going to be Visual Studio 2015. So if you are creating your projects in something else, etc., at least you can go through and just look at the code, maybe copy paste if you need to, or just get inspiration from. So everything I do will get up on that GitHub page. Anyway, so let's get to this sprite class, right? So in order to create a class, we go add class and we say, we call it sprite.cs. Okay, so now we have sprite.cs and we're going to make it public. That's how accessible the class is. This is not going to be too much of a C-sharp lesson. I'm hoping that you already have some C-sharp knowledge because that will help you in many things when it comes to monogame. So I might be saying some things that are relevant to the language, but mostly we're going to talk about monogame. So we're going to give it a vector and it doesn't know what this vector is until I press control period and it says, oh, it's in Microsoft XNA framework. Do you want me to type it out for you? And I'll say, yes, please, thank you. So control period enter is a lot faster than typing out using Microsoft XNA framework for me. I will create something called a, uh, a vector two called position. So this sprite will have a position in the world. It will need its own texture. Uh, it's gonna be a texture 2D that we will call texture. Again, it doesn't know what it is, control period. Oh, would you like to add this? Yes, absolutely, do that for me, thank you. And uh, yeah, actually, let's, let's keep it to the bare minimum. The only thing we have left is creating a constructor. There's a short, like short snippet in uh, Visual Studio. So I just type CTOR and press tab twice and it just writes it out for me. But we want to have a texture as a parameter and a vector two for position. And I'll have a short little thing about this whole lowercase p in front of parameters. That's just how I code. It's my code standard that I use myself. And you definitely don't have to do that yourself, of course, but whatever code standard you choose, keep to it. And uh, as long as you're consistent, it's a good code standard. Well, usually, but being consistent is the important part about a code standard. So we just say position is whatever we give it in the uh, constructor. And the same for texture, we just save it in the sprite class. And basically that's our sprite class so far. Let's go back to this YouTube game. And something I want to do immediately is remove all these comments. I suggest that you read them and try to understand them. I have read these a few times and I feel confident enough to take them away. But definitely read them, keep them for a while uh, to keep uh, kind of like a little, you know, um, a reminder. Okay, so let's use our new class. We'll call this sprite and hmm, I feel like I need something like a bit of a picture or something. So I'll go fetch a picture. Uh, let me just uh, find something here. I'll use one of my own little things I've drawn before called tiny mail. You see it's a little tiny, tiny male figure and we shall have him copy always so he ends up in the content folder 
wherever I build. So I'm going to call him tiny male sprite. And in the load content, we're going to say tiny male sprite equals a new sprite. And it wants a texture. Hmm. But we don't have a texture yet. So we're going to remedy that. So in this load content, I will have a texture 2D. I'll call it tiny male texture. And I will copy this previous line of code that we have from the previous video. But I'm not going to load space island. I'm going to load tiny male into this texture. And now for sprite here, I can use that texture, tiny male texture, and give him position. I'll say 100x and 100y. So here will be 100 to, let's see, 100 to the left and 100 bottom or downwards. Okay, so uh, now if I just press F5 here, of course, nothing much have changed. He is not on the screen. And of course, we have to draw him. And this is how we drew the space island texture. Now, I want to do something different for the sprite, because sprites can perhaps be of different types and have different kind of uh, properties. So I would like to say, and this is this is one practice you can use, is basically saying uh, you, you write ghost code. You write things that are not, you know, they don't exist, but you want them to work like this. So I, I would like to say tiny male sprite, just draw, just draw it. Uh, and it, it, it says, you know, this doesn't exist. And I press control period and like, do you want to generate this method? It says here, generate method sprite draw. Yeah, yeah, please do. And then I press F12 or I go to the, go to definition. And I change this to be public. And immediately I go like, w but you know, in order to draw things, if you recall, we need the sprite batch. Hmm. So we might have to send that sprite batch as a parameter through this draw. Now, of course, this draw doesn't take a sprite batch yet. So we, we fix that We say sprite batch. So kind of a good practice to have all the draw functions or methods to take sprite batches. If needed, of course, if you don't need them, then fine. And now we can say, tell the sprite batch to, by the way, we want to draw what texture? Well, you can either write this texture. We're inside this class, this sprite, um, this instance. But for now, we'll just write texture. And it has a position. And you can see the this, um, this one, this takes a uh, rectangle. But if you just, you can browse through these. And you'll see that, oh, this one takes a position uh, in a vector format. So we can uh, give it the position and then a color. And we'll just go white because we want it to be drawn just uh, as it is uh, viewed in, you know, just without any kind of uh, uh, change. So now I should be able to run this. And there you can see the little guy. Oh, but my mouse isn't showing. Just a quick fix. We'll go up here. We'll say now game has in the class game has this is mouse visible. And you can set it to true. It's default false. So this comes from the game which we uh, inherit. So if we do that, you can now see the mouse. You might not want that for your game. So don't do that part if you don't want it. So here's the little guy standing on top of the space island. Now we could be done here, but we've basically done the same thing as we did in the previous video. We've basically just drawn something on the screen. So we do have a position. Now we could try to move this sprite. So I'm going to, in the update, which is now, uh, it's called uh, every so often, I'll check keyboard, get state. And you know what, we're going to do something like this. We're going to uh, keyboard state equals keyboard get state. And we'll say if keyboard state is key down, keys D. Oh, no, start with W actually. And I'll go three more. W and S is up and down, A 
and D is left and right. So what we can do here is just say tiny male sprite. If so, when we press a key, the state changes here in the keyboard get state. And if we hold W, uh, this will be true. What do we want to do when W is pressed? We want to change the position of the sprite in the Y uh, axis. And we want him to change to go upwards when we press W. And in order to draw it more upwards on the screen, we have to detract or deduct, I mean, from the Y position. So instead of saying position Y equals position Y minus 10, you can draw a shorthand or you can type a shorthand, which is minus equals. It basically means uh, subtract 10 from this. And if we want to go downwards, we add to the Y axis. And in case of left, we want to deduct from the X axis and add if we're going to the right. Oops. Okay, so let's try this. If I press FI now and I press WASD, you can see that he's moving, but he's moving very fast. And this is actually a problem. Not only that you might want to tweak what speed he walks in, but also if you have a slow computer and the update is only called once per second, he will move 10 pixels per second or the Y or X value will increase 10 for every second. But if you have a very fast computer and I will exaggerate here, but let's say it's called 1000 times per second, you'll have him move for every second 1000 uh, times 10. So he would walk like 10,000 pixels in just a second. And we don't want that behavior. We want behavior to be similar on different computers. So what you use is this game time. Game time keeps track of how much time has passed since you last update. So we want to say, you know, if this amount of time has passed, we want to move this much. So what we can do is take game time dot elapsed game time milliseconds. Typically, um, you'll get something like 16.66667 milliseconds per update. Depends on what kind of frame rate and all that stuff. But uh, you take that and you, whoops, if you divide by a thousand and times another number, you'll get some kind of like almost like 10 pixels per second movement. Uh, and let's see, we will copy paste that for every one of these. Now, if we run, you can see that he's moving very slowly, but at least he's moving. So about 10 pixels per, uh, per second. And it should be on any kind of computer. And uh, if we would want to change, so he's a bit faster, either we can change here. We could perhaps demonstrate by just saying 30 in the X directions. So it'll be faster in horizontal, but not so fast in the up and down. Anyway, so that's just the beginning of how to make a sprite. At least we have something that's moving now and that'll be it for this one episode of uh, this mono game tutorial series. And if you have any uh, opinions about this uh, tutorial, please put some comments, some feedback down in the section below. And I would love if you rated the video, either a thumbs up or thumbs down and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.